write 3.5 right and graph equations of lines. Okay, this section is a little bit longer than um, what we're usually accustomed to. Most of the sections are three or four pages. This one has five, so just a heads up. Okay, slope-intercept form. Most of you guys are already, uh, actually hopefully all of you guys are already familiar with slope-intercept form. The general form of a linear equation in slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. I also wrote it over here, m y equals mx plus b, m, slope, b, y-intercept. Another form you're, you're going to see a lot is standard form. The general form of a linear equation in standard form is ax plus by equals c, where a and b are not both zero. You will frequently be given equations in this form, and you will have to convert them into this form. Okay? So it's good to be familiar with both of them. We will be using this one a lot more than this one. Okay, write an equation of the line in slope-intercept form. Okay, we're given this line, and we need to write an equation for it. First thing we have to do is we need to find the slope. Remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So we need to find the slope, and we need to find the y-intercept. We already see the y-intercept. The slope is a little bit more difficult to find. But we're given two points. Let's take our y's. 3 minus negative 1 over 0 minus 2. 3 minus negative 1, these become positive, so I have 4 over 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. So there's our m. The y-intercept is where it hits the y-axis. Notice that it hits the y-axis at 1, 2, 3. Okay? Intercepts at the point 0, 3. The y-intercept is 3 because y is the second number. So, the m is negative 2, the b is 3. So y equals m x plus b. Substitute negative 2 for m and 3 for b. All right, let's go on to page 2. <clears throat> Write an equation of the line passing through the point 1, negative 1 that is parallel to the line with the equation y equals negative 2, or I'm sorry, y equals 2x minus 1. First thing we have to do, find the slope. The slope of the line parallel to y equals 2x plus or minus 1 is the same as the given line. y equals mx plus b. This is our slope. The slope is 2. Now the y-intercept um, is going to be different. It's not going to have the same y-intercept as this line. It's going to have a different one. We need to find the y-intercept by using m equals 2 and xy equals 1, negative 1. So I'm going to plug in this for m, this for x, and this for y. So y is negative 1 m is 2, x is 1. Um, I substitute all these things. Um, I wish they gave a little more space. I'm going to end up with negative 1. Actually, let me write this over here. You have negative 1 equals 2 plus b. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So b equals negative 3. Now, so, once again, the slope is the same, but the y-intercept, this y-intercept is negative 1, this y-intercept is negative 3. Th these are going to be different. Because m equals negative 2 and b equals negative 3, an equation of the line is y equals mx plus b. Okay. Go on to page 3. Actually, sorry. Make sure you guys do this checkpoint. Let's go on to page 3. 
Okay, example three. Write an equation of the line J passing through the, sorry, this got cut off, the point um, 3, 2, that is perpendicular to the line K with the equation Y equals negative 3X plus 1. All right, we're going to start this out the same way. Y equals MX plus B. The slope of this line is negative 3. Okay? But because we're looking for a perpendicular line, if we were looking for a parallel line, we would just use negative 3 as our slope. But perpendicular, we need to find the opposite reciprocal, which means I need to flip this over and change the sign. So that's what I did here. I turned it upside down. This one was negative, so now it becomes positive. All right, so the slope of k is negative 3. Negative 3 plus whatever our slope is has to be negative 1, so m has to be 1 over 3. Once again, I like this method better, but the book, for some reason, likes to use this method. The product of the slopes of perpendicular lines is negative 1, so I divided each side by, um, by negative 3. Oops. All right, we're going to find the y-intercept, b, by using m equals 1 third, and xy we're given our xy here. y is, um, let's see here, 2, m is 1 third, x is 3. I substitute for x, y, and m. Once again, they don't really give you much room, so I'm going to add a step over here. We have 2 equals 1 third of 3 is 1, minus 1 from both sides, b equals 1. Because m equals one-third and b equals one, an equation of the line j is y equals mx plus b. Okay? You can check that lines j and k are perpendicular by graphing these. So, the first equation was y equals negative 3x plus 1. y equals negative 3x plus 1. Here's the y-intercept, goes down 1, 2, 3, and over 1. I wish I could make straight lines on this thing. There we go, kind of, sort of. This was line k. Line j was y equals 1 third x plus 1. So, same y-intercept, but I'm going to go up 1 over 3. And as you can see, these make a right angle. So we did it right. All right, you guys go ahead and do this checkpoint. Let's go on to page four. Rent. The graph models the total cost of renting an apartment. Write an equation of the line. Explain the meaning of the slope and the y-intercept of the line. Okay, so first things first, let's write an equation for this line. We're given our two points. Here's our y's. So, I've got 2375 minus 1250 over 5 minus 2. All right, 2375 minus 1250, excuse me, 5, 2, 1, and 1. I've got 1125 over 3. I'm going to do some long division. 3 goes into 11 3 times. 3 goes into 22, 7 times, and 15, 5 times. So, 375 is my slope. Find the y-intercept. We're actually kind of given the y-intercept right here. Whoops. Use a point on the graph. Um, you know, you can kind of already tell what it is, but let's do it their way. Let's use this point here. So we're given 1250 equals our slope, 375, times the x, which is 2. And if you do all this out, you're going to end up with b equals 500, which is what you can kind of see already. Now let's write an equation. m is 375, and b is 500. So y equals mx plus b. 
the equation y equals 375x plus 500 models the cost. The slope is 375. Uh, I'm sorry. We already know it's 375. The slope 375 represents the monthly rent. And the y intercept is the initial cost to rent the apartment. Okay? All right, let's take a look at example five. Graph 2x plus 3y equals 6. The equation is in standard form, so we're going to use the intercepts. Another way you could do this, if you aren't really confident using intercepts, you could convert this into slope-intercept form and then graph it. Either way, it works. To find the x-intercept, let y equal 0. So I'm going to plug in 0 for y. Um, so I end up with... I'm going to add a step because I don't give you room. 3 times 0 is 0, so I'm left with 2x equals 6. When I divide both sides by 2, x equals 3. To find the y-intercept, let x equal 0. So I'm going to plug in 0 here. 2 times 0 is 0, so 3y equals 6. When I divide both sides by 3, y equals 2. So the intercepts are 3, 0 and 0, 2. I'm just going to graph them. So 3, 0 is here, 0, 2 is here. Voila, you're all done. All right, last page. You can buy a magazine at a store for, this should say $3. Okay. You can subscribe yearly to the magazine for a flat fee of $18. After how many magazines is the subscription a better buy? There's an A over here. That's the subscription, A, better buy. Okay, model each pur purchase with an equation. Cost of yearly subscription, Y equals 18. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and graph this. Y equals 18 looks like this. Straight line across 18. The cost of one magazine, y equals 3x, because every magazine costs $3. Okay? So if you buy one magazine, you pay $3. Buy two magazines, $6, because 3 times 2 is 6. If you buy four magazines, $12. If you buy 10 magazines, $30. Okay? So this, if you think about it, actually, we'll just go through here. Um, graph each equation. This one's easy to graph. Point of intersection is, ah, hold on. Before we do this, let's graph this. There is no B, so you can just assume that the B is zero because there is nothing added here. M is three, B is zero. So I can start here. I'm gonna go up three now, you could, if you wanted, because this is actually a 3. Actually, let's just do it this way. Ah. Notice that this goes up by 3. It doesn't go up by 1. So when you go up 1, 2, 3. There's supposed to be 3 lumps there. That's 3. And then go over 1. Okay? It's a little bit confusing, but that's how they did the graph. And the line should intersect right about here. Yeah. My mistake, they actually intersect. There we go. Right there. Okay, the point of intersection is 618. Using the graph, you can see that it is cheaper to buy magazines individually if you buy less than... 6. So, if you buy 5 magazines, you're only going to pay $15. If you buy 7 magazines, you're going to pay 21 so it's, it's a better deal to pay the $18 annual fee. Okay? If you buy more than 6 magazines per year, it is cheaper to buy a subscription. 
All right, I'll let you guys do the checkpoint, and that's all.